Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing the long-awaited my 2018 makeup favorites the best makeup of 2018 Whatever you want to call it, but this is only going to be makeup Not that I have jillions of products like a lot of other people do I want this to be focused on makeup and to me This is still a lot of products and I don't want this video to be super long super overwhelming So I will be doing a, another video focused on other beauty products such as skincare or tools or basically anything else that I want to talk about that was a fair for the year. Let's just go ahead and get started. Just a disclaimer, I don't try every new makeup product, not even close. These are just products that I have found throughout the year that I love and that I will continue to be using and probably won't replace, honestly. These aren't just products that I found this year, these are just products that I've continued to use throughout the year as well, so not only products that were discovered. I don't try nearly 1% of the new releases. I'm not someone who's constantly buying new makeup. I just kind of buy what I feel like I would like or based on reviews and things like that. I'm personally a viewer, a consumer, someone that doesn't want to be having new releases shoved down their throat every time there's something released. So yeah, and I'm going to continue to be like that through the new year. I'm just going to go in the order that I would do my face. First is primer. I have two. They're kind of similar, kind of not. This primer, if you couldn't guess it, the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Face Primer, the dewy one. This is literally the best face primer ever. It's the only one that I used all year basically until the last few months and that is the e.l.f. natural glow lotion in the golden one this one i've went through a lot of this primer is so dewy and the thing with this is it sets down so i feel like if you want like a dewy glow but you don't want something that's moisturizing this will be great for you because it sets and doesn't move so whenever you put your foundation or your concealer or anything on top it's literally going to shine through all of it that's what i used literally for the whole year recently i just discovered the elf natural glow lotion and this is just a lot more moisturizing I haven't used really the Wet n Wild face primer at all just because I really want moisture So this is like a moisturizer with a little bit of glow to it and it still shines through your makeup and it moisturizes This is definitely a product that I'm going to reach for during the summertime or even times when I want just super glowy skin Sometimes I just put this on the high points of the face and go out like that it just depends this would definitely recommend if you want like a literally 10 man glow but you want something that sets and this is something that you would want if it's more subtle and you want something moisturizing and sorry for these shadows if it's very distracting i'm sorry i don't really know what to do those are the two face points next would be foundation i personally do not wear foundation i don't feel like my skin needs it whenever i do wear it my skin just looks very cakey because i have super dry skin what i do whenever i want more coverage i use the air studio perfect bb cream in a fair it's probably a light medium coverage this looks so natural on the skin it's moisturizing it doesn't make my skin look cakey or dry and it gives enough coverage to even out the skin if i want just my skin to be even then i use this this is one dollar which is crazy everything in this video is drugstore slash affordable because i really don't feel the need to buy high-end makeup i just feel like the drugstore has the same quality type product if you find the right things and sometimes better the few high-end products that i have purchased obviously did not make it into this video this is one dollar and no that doesn't sway my opinion at all it's never broken me out personally i feel like it has more coverage than maybelline baby cream me personally doesn't have any coverage whatsoever really this is kind of a thicker bb cream and i wouldn't compare it really at all to the cc cream from it cosmetics i've never used that on my skin i know that this is nowhere near that coverage but you could probably build this up this is just products that i use if i want to even out the coverage of my skin but i still don't want to wear foundation because i will never wear foundation again can you guess it for concealer i have the makeup revolution conceal and define and i just have the bigger one which i definitely recommend the bigger size because it's like way more product for only three more dollars this is such a good concealer i don't really know how to explain it i just know that i've kept reaching for this concealer for the past like six eight months i just feel like this has perfect coverage it says full coverage but i've personally never found a concealer that is full coverage on me not even tarte shape tape this is just the perfect coverage it's not too thick it doesn't dry out my under eyes i set it and it doesn't crease at all and it wears beautifully with the combination of all of my base products i literally have just found the perfect base routine that literally looks so good it lasts 
so long it's comfortable the only problem with my base routine is i get these gross smile line creases but that literally just happens all the time so i don't really care i don't know how to describe it honestly the first little one that i had i went through a whole thing of it i pulled the stopper out and scraped it until it was done it's a star guide people say it's a do for the tart shape tape i have tart shape tape and i like this a lot better the powder i use the same thing in every video and it's literally the best powder ever it's the aoa studio perfect setting powder and this one is in soft light this is literally such a perfect shade for me i just love this so much it's literally so fine I don't really know if I have a problem with flash black. I've never noticed it. This is also a dollar. It literally makes my skin look so flawless and airbrushed. I just take a damp sponge and I press it into the skin. I don't bake. This is the only place I bake anymore. I feel like I can't use too much. Like if I do overload the powder, it doesn't make my skin feel tight or dry. It just makes my skin look so good. And I feel like loose powders are just so much better for dry skin. I literally cannot rave about this powder enough. This literally changed my makeup routine so much. I can't guarantee that my base routine would be as good as it is without this. Just saying. So many of these products aren't going to be a surprise because I'm just a creature of habit. I literally use the same thing in every video. The only reason I wouldn't use this bronzer is just to switch things up. This is the e.l.f. Cool Bronzer. Now, I'm not sure if you can even get this anymore. Like, that's so sad. I'm mentioning it just because if you know where you can get this, tweet e.l.f., email them, complain, and tell them to bring this back. I love how this has, like, a more cool tone color. This is, like, a blushy, bronzy shade that I use as just, like, a regular matte blush if I want, like, a simple look. And then this is a deeper one that you can deepen it up with. I'll sometimes take them separately. I'll take them all together most of the time. That's what I'm wearing on my cheeks right now, all over my face. I just mix them together. This just helped lighten it up. All these other products I have on my skin as well. I'll let you know if I don't. This is so good. Like it's just like the perfect formula. If you swatch it all together, yeah, like you can barely see it. It just won't do it justice. And if you ever see it, please buy 10 and then send me one. If they actually do discontinue this, I would say that I would stop using it and only use it for special occasions, but honestly, I would try and find something that's just like this. It just creates the perfect tone. Sometimes I won't want it as warm, so I just avoid this and I just go like this. And then sometimes I want to just like focus on contour and I'll just dip into this. The hand sizes are big enough to where you can do that. This is literally perfection. Why would you take this away? This is so, 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 so good. I didn't mention this from the beginning, which I should have. I really like how Kathleen Lights titled hers most loved slash most used. You used it all year but maybe you have a different product now. That's how it is for a few of my things. For blush, my most used blush this year was definitely Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush in Rosé Champagne. It's a beautiful peachy champagne. What I've realized in the past few months, there's not too much of a base color to it. Like, it's all luminosity, which, yeah, that's great. Like, I love that. But I feel like this is more of a blush topper. I need, like, a more pigmented blush under this, or it's going to be just, like, all peachy shimmer on my face, which I love for a while because, I mean, I use this so much. I feel like when I use this, I have to go over it with another blush, and I don't mind doing that because this is so pretty. What I've kind of replaced it with is this AOA Studio Perfect Blush in Wispy, and this is just basically a matte version. <laughs> it's just that peachy color. It's pretty much like my Santi Sunsets blush. It's just a less intense version, which I did use that a lot this year, so, I mean, this is kind of counting as it because it's like the same thing but less intense. I feel like this has replaced it, but honestly, every time I use Use this I use this as well so I kind of been mixing the two but I've been reaching for this a lot more for highlighter once again this has literally just been my solid face routine all year which I've said 12 times I just keep going back to this and the only time once again I use different things is because I'm trying to use different things this is the soap X makeup revolution highlighter palette it is so gorgeous my most used are definitely these three. These are the two shades that I always use from this palette and sometimes if I want a little more gold I'll add this in it which is what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. This is literally so gorgeous. The only shade that I'm not too crazy about is the pink and the purple. If they were more reflective the purple looks really pretty but this is honestly like a consistency that you would want in like something close to your skin tone. The pink you can barely even see. If you're gonna do a colored highlighter you want it to be blinding. Since this purple isn't that intense it honestly just looks ashy on your cheeks. Here they all are. So I've explained to this before Four. The formula is more rough, harder. It's not like super creamy to the touch. Like it is creamy, especially once you rub it together. It's not like, oh my goodness, this is so smooth. Whenever you put this on your skin, it blends in so well because of that texture. See this, like you can't tell there's a strip. It makes it look so much more blended into the skin. So now the face is done and we shall do the eyes. Let me explain. I have four eyeshadow palettes. 
So I've already filmed this video one. So the way I explained it, yeast to die. The first three twelfths of the year I used one palette. The next like eight twelfths of the year I used one palette. And then the next one twelfth of the year I used one palette. The one twelfth is just an honorary mention. The last palette is just like an accent palette. The one that I used the first few months of the year, this will probably come as a shock to y'all to be in my favorites because it kind of is to me. I really never used this palette throughout the year besides when I first got it. This is the ColourPop and Kathleen Lights Dream Street Collection. While I was doing my makeup because this is what's on my eyes, I dropped this and literally all the eyeshadows fell out and I did not know that these were magnetized to the palette. I just thought they were glued in. If you want to get all your shadows out, just drop it on the Floor. What's on my eyes right now? I put this shade on first and then I put a little of this shade and then I put a little of this shade on the inner and outer corner and I put this down and then I put this one in the center and then it wasn't popping enough so then I put a little bit of a glitter liner on top and then on the lower lash line is this shade and then on the inner corner is this shade. Now when I look at my looks at the beginning of the year, first of all in the beginning of the year I was still wearing foundation which is crazy. I feel like I can create so many more cool looks with this palette and I'm not focusing on it because I've just been in my same palette throughout the whole year so this is definitely a palette that I want to use a lot more in 2019 I feel like whenever I have in a special event I do like the same look and it's always with this palette with this warm brown this rose gold mostly and then kind of some of this and then I'll hit a little more. I definitely recommend this palette because I like how this is small. It's just a lot less overwhelming than huge palettes. So this is something that I definitely bring when I'm traveling because it's all like the staple neutrals, no like repeating tones. And then it has my most used pop of color and then like a pretty good pop of color as well. The only thing that I've never gotten in this palette is why there's like two of these shades. I get that one of them is more warm and one of them is more rosy, but like... If I had to choose one palette that obviously won for the year for most used, it would obviously be the Jaclyn Hill palette just because literally this is the only palette I used pretty much since I got it and then up until I got the James Charles palette. This is a great palette if you love neutral colors. Obviously it's a great palette because literally like all of my looks on my channel for about eight months <laughs> consisted of this palette. If I want like a warm smoky eye, this is just the go-to because literally all of these tones in here are for warm smoky eyes. I just don't do that that often. This shade in the palette is one of my favorites. I also really grew to love this shade, which is called Bun. And I really love this pool party shade. It's such a good turquoise. Like it's so vivid. Yeah. Ooh, I love the formula of all these shadows. The only shadow in here that is literally disgusting is this blue right here. It's all chunky. It's just very hard. Oh, and then I also like that shade. It's like super pukey. And that's probably Hunt's. I really love those two shades. Wow. It's just a really great all around palette, especially if you're a beginner and you want a palette with a lot of tones in it. Personally, for me, since I have grown and my eyeshadow, I just need a little more color than this. I don't use like all these warm tones. I definitely want to get more use out of this palette because once I got the James Charles, like I literally was like the accent palette is the NYX Ultimate Brights Shadow Palette. This is literally just a palette of bright eyeshadows. In the beginning of the year, I didn't use this at all because I was like, these aren't pigmented at all. But in the beginning of the year, I did not know of such a thing of not setting my eye base. Once I did that and used these, I really love these tones, especially this lilac. Like, I just need 20 jillion of these lilacs in my collection and I will just wear lilac eyeshadow for the rest of my life. And I also really love this terracotta color. And this bright pink blends out really well and this is like a really Really unique pink this blue and this like mac and cheese color once again girl the best way to use these shadows are as standalone colors I'll put on my concealer on my eyelid not set it and pack one of these in the crease and blend it out and then build it up on the lid that's what I call like my wash of color looks the only one that I've done that with is this lilac purple and then this bright pink I want to just do that all year especially with this green and this green this is such a great palette for that they aren't really hard to work with especially if you use them like that with a tacky base the best way to use this is definitely as my like wash of color things which I fell in love with this year. I feel like next year I'm going to be wearing those all the time or maybe if you want to do like a neutral eye on the top and then just put a pop of color on the lower lash line this would be great as well. I don't recommend this if you want super punchy pigmented colors. That's not what this is for but I feel like this is a good natural color palette if that makes sense. The honorable mention palette. I feel like everyone knows what this is going to be and this literally wasn't in anyone's 2018 favorites because it just came out but I had to just say something okay. This is the Morphe James Charles palette. This is like literally the most beautiful palette ever and I just know this is gonna be my palette for 2019. Neither of 
these are favorite of the year. These are honorable mentions. If you're picking this palette up already, you have to get the Morphe Eyelid Primer unless you already have like a MAC Paint Pot or something like that. If you use it with this and don't set it and you use the brighter colors first, and I don't recommend this if you are just a day-to-day -day makeup wearer that only wears the top half of this or not even that, you're gonna get half of the palette that you're not gonna use. This is a palette that you can do like a neutral look with and just put a pop of color on the lower lash and I love that. Or you can do like a full-on colorful look or you can just do a natural look. I love this palette so much and this eyelid primer just makes the world a big difference literally it's so much easier to blend if you set your brow bone very close to your brow so that it blends really well next to your brow and doesn't stick to it that's my spiel about that now onto like eye things other than eyeshadow i forgot to mention this before the eyeshadow the sante super smooth concealer is my favorite eye base in the world it's literally just a concealer it's so so beat up and they don't sell this shade on the website anymore they have darker shades so if you have a darker skin tone than me i definitely recommend this this is super full coverage on the eyelid it's not that full coverage on the on my face i build up on my eyelid blend it out don't set it and it's like a super super good base for eyeshadows i've used it literally for the past like two or three years for traumatic eye looks and no for tight line slash waterline black liner maybelline master precise skinny gel pencil i literally am never going to be able to use like another black eyeliner that's not this thin because i will poke my eye out oh fruity this is so good it's so easy to put in your waterline and it lasts pretty well i feel like if you don't have a problem with things lasting on you this will definitely last on you if you put it in your tight line it's gonna go in your waterline it does leak and my favorite mascara ever like literally for the past like four years has been the maybelline lash sensational it's such a good mascara this is the wand i honestly don't know what to say about it but it makes your lashes look pretty good i think it doesn't get too clumpy if you brush it out i always only use one pump of mascara top and bottom lashes this is never smudged on me it starts flaking if i take at it obviously i have contacts in that eyeliner or this mascara don't get on my contacts for little eye duster type things i thought i would mention these just because if i feel like the shadow just isn't like boom like i want it to then i'll go over it with glitter liners these are my two most used i have this gold one i just tap it over it and tap it in these are the santi glitter liner crystal shine and ultra smooth gold and silver these are from chamasay as well they're pretty concentrated but i just like them for little accents for my brows the only thing that i use since i discovered it this is my second one and i already have a mac ellie girl shady slim brow pencil and brunette this is literally the perfect shade for me most of the time every brow pencil brow product for dark hair is very warm and this is not warm really at all and this spoolie is great i'll just underline my brow really lightly and then i'll take this spoolie and just feather it up it will blend the line away and it'll blend it into my brows like it's literally like magic i'm gonna mention lashes two things that i always need when i apply lashes duo brush on lash adhesive this is the only glue i've used and it works well and the other thing i need is the wet n wild mega slim skinny tip eyeliner and this is a felt tip it's super skinny super black this is so good for connecting your inner corner to your lash band it makes it look so much better the lashes of the year were obviously the aoa studio lexus lashes the only thing that i don't like about these a lot of them are like always inconsistent whether like these two don't match or like they're just not all the same i love the shape so much because they're smaller in the inner corner and they flare out and i just really love that with my eye shape for the lips finally first thing i do whenever i do my lips is lip liner and this was the year that i discovered lip layering i never thought that i would be someone to do lip liner lipstick and gloss my two only lip Lip liners that I use are the LA Colors lip liner pencils. They have like a really good grip to them, but at the same time, they're still smooth. They don't tug at your lips. I have the shades Smooth Plum and Chocolate. Really, the only two lip colors I do is a warm nude or just a regular nude or a pinky nude, or I do a mauve or a mauve nude. That's the realm of lip colors that I do, and that's all I need. Most of the time, this is way darker than the lip color that I wear because I'm wearing this one right now. It blends really well with the lipstick. I love how they're a little more stiff because I hate lip liners that are just like, and then they slip across your face like what's the point of that it's a lip liner it's supposed to be a guy these are stiff enough but they don't touch once again i went through phases with my lip colors but i still love all these i just wanted to mention all the ones that i loved this year first i'm going to mention lipsticks my favorite lipstick formula is the maybelline creamy matte lipsticks i have about five or six of them these are my two most used daringly nude and clay crush and i have clay crush on right now daringly nude is something that i do when i want a little more lighter pinkier more neutrally toned one. clay crush is what i use if i want a little bit darker and a more warm toned brown i just wanted to give this a mention to show you 
these are the Intimate nudes, but they're the same formula, just different colors. This is the one in Almond Rose. I don't like pink lips on myself, but this is just a really pretty flattering natural pink. What I loved over the summer was the ColourPop and Kathleen Lights Ultra Satin Lip in Dreamy. This is like a really pretty salmon color. It's so comfortable and it's so flattering on the lips. It doesn't dry my lips out and it wears off super evenly. All of these lip colors wear off so evenly and that's the reason I like it because it doesn't just like wear off and give you butthole lips or leave that lip liner realm. Lipstick that I loved at the end of the year that I kind of don't want to count but it's like this sort of color. AOA Studio Wonder Matte Liquid Lipstick and Hype Mauve Nude color. I love this formula as well. It's not too drying at all. The topper of the year was the ColourPop Kathleen Knight Ultra Glossy Lip in Moonchild. When I first got this, I was disappointed in it because it had gold glitter in it. This is the best topper ever. This is the only thing I've used to top on my lips just because it has color to it. I don't really like wearing this alone just because it does have gold glitter in it. If I do wear it, then I just do like tap, tap, tap. It looks like pretty and glistening. This just nudes out a lip color, which I always need a little more newness makes it glossy obviously love that my favorite lip gloss for no makeup 99 percent of the time i'm not wearing makeup but i always want my lips looking juicy of lip plumping gloss in peach bellini as you can see i'm almost out but i already have a backup this is so glossy so good and yeah it has a little bit of a tingling sensation only if you have like super chapped lips and it just gives you a little more juiciness and it's super glossy. And setting sprays. This was my favorite of the year, but then they discontinued it. It's the Essence Keep It Perfect Makeup Fixing Spray. It's literally the best thing. It literally makes everything melt into your skin like magic, but that's not here anymore. So what I love is the Catrice Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray. This actually has like pink reflex in it. It sets your makeup really well and melts it in and makes it look so good. Like that one just has shimmer in it. That is the best makeup of 2018 in my opinion and once again, I didn't try out 1% of the new releases, so it's obviously not the best makeup ever. It's the best makeup that I tried in 2018. And once again, if you want to see my other beauty favorites of 2018, just let me know down below and I'll probably be the next video. Make sure and tell me down below your beauty favorites, whatever you want to say. Just let me know down below, even if it isn't have anything to do with this. What videos do you want to see from me? I really hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love it if you subscribe down below and please give this video a big thumbs up. It means so much to me. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! I've been talking for so long. Look at this makeup. I really like it. If you want a tutorial, <laughs> tell me why.